This video will be one of, I think, three that I'll do on experimental design. So this is from question three of the 2017 paper. Um, and it will cover an experimental design case with an enzyme and enzyme inhibition. So when you're doing an experimental design question, it's really important to read this part of the question, which seems to be stating the obvious, but loads of folk don't, and then they don't understand what's going on in this question. You'll be given something that you probably will not have seen before, and what's called a novel experiment or a novel investigation. So you'll have to make assumptions and try to determine what is going on in this experiment based on your knowledge your prior knowledge from the course, okay, but applying it to it. So, as with most questions, highlight the key things. Okay, so an investigation was carried out into the effect of a competitive inhibitor on the activity of phosphatase. The phosphatase is an enzyme like catalase or whatever else. So it's at different substrate concentrations. So this tells you phosphatase is an enzyme which catalyzes the reaction below. So Phosphatase changes phenolphthalein phosphate into phenolphthalein and phosphate. Okay, so we have six test tubes set up containing a different concentration of substrate. So this is what they're changing. Okay, the inhibitor and the enzyme were then added afterwards to each tube. Okay, figure one shows then the contents. So notice how the stated volumes, we've got one centimetre cubed of enzyme, one centimetre cubed of inhibitor, five centimetres cubed of the substrate. They've stated these already. So that means that if they ask you about variables they kept constant, you can't state these ones because they've already told you they're, they're kept the same. Okay, the next part then says after 30 minutes, one centimetre cubed of alkali was added. Okay, so this part is about time. So again, you can't really state about certain parts of time. Okay, now the next bit gives you an understanding of what this experiment is showing you. So it's stating that phenolphthalein turns pink in the presence of alkali. So basically what that's telling you is if after 30 minutes phenolphthalein is produced, it will turn pink. Okay, and the more phenolphthalein produced... The more intense the pink colour, so the stronger the pink is, and then the higher the absorbance is. Okay, measured by this colorimeter, which is what you're using as your results. Okay, so to kind of explain what this means, that means that if there's more phenolphthalein, there's more pink, and there's a higher number in the absorbance. Okay, so if you look back at this experiment, that means that there's been a product produced. So if you think based on your knowledge of inhibitors, that means that that enzyme is working and it's not being inhibited. Okay, so that means that it's not been inhibited, it's less inhibited. Or more active. Okay, so it's not been inhibited, so it is more active. So the higher the number, the more active. Okay, so this is less active, more inhibited. Okay, so more active, less inhibited. Okay, so this is you applying your knowledge of what these results mean in the experiment. Okay, so now to look at the questions. So this first one is a suggest question. That is an A style question. So these are challenging questions. Now it's asking me to suggest why the alkali was not added to each test tube at the start of the experiment, at the start of the investigation. Now this is where you have to look at where the alkali was added. So it's stating after 30 minutes the alkali was added. So that's given them some time to do something. Okay, so... Your answer, the stem of your um, answer, should say to allow time for. Okay, so initially to allow time for the reaction to happen. Because what is happening in this experiment is that enzyme is reacting and producing the products. You're given it 30 minutes 
to react and to allow it to take place before you then put in that alkali to get that pink colour. Now also you might know that alkali is if it's an extreme alkali, an extreme of pH, it might denature the enzyme. Okay, so you could also say that so the enzyme is not denatured. Okay, or because it has to do with pH, remember, you can say that so that the enzyme can work at the optimum pH. Okay, so there's quite a number of answers for this because it's quite a broad question. Okay, the next question then says, state two variables other than those shown above which should be kept constant to make this investigation valid. Now I've given you a list um, of different factors, different variables that can be kept constant. So if you have a look in that list, then that'll help you to answer these, okay? Now first of all, what you need to do is rule out the ones that you cannot use. They have stated the duration of this part. So you can't state duration. They've told you the length of time for that experiment, so you cannot use time or duration of experiment. They've told you volumes of enzyme inhibitor and substrate, so you cannot use them because they've already told you them. You can't then state concentration of a substrate because they have changed that. That is actively what they're changing in the experiment. So therefore, you cannot use that as something to be kept constant. And just the same as you can't then say absorbance must be kept the same because that is something that they are measuring as a result. So basically then you've got to think of what is left over based on this experiment. Now, if this is an enzyme experiment, yes, it'll be affected by pH, like the alkali, but it'll also be affected by temperature. So for an example of this, the temperature would be something that could affect it and therefore would need to be kept constant. But for this, it's higher. You'd have to say temperature of, and it'd be the test tube contents. Okay, or of the solutions. Now, yes, they've told us the volume of the enzyme and the inhibitor and the substrate. Okay, but they've not told us anything about the concentration of the enzyme or the concentration of the inhibitor. They've told us about the concentration of the substrate, but not of the enzyme or the inhibitor. So you can see concentration of enzyme, or you could state specifically that it's phosphatase, or you can say concentration of the inhibitor. And also they're adding alkali to this experiment. So you could also say concentration of the alkali, because at no point have they stated them. Okay. The third point is they've just said alkali. They've not told you which type of alkali that is. So therefore, if you say type of alkali, that would also be acceptable. Because you need to keep them the same in every experiment. And then the last point could be the fact that, yes, they're adding an alkali to the experiment, but they've not stated that they've kept the pHs the same to begin with. So the pHs of the solutions must be kept the same so that they're not affected at the beginning. Okay, so there's a whole range of things that you can talk about in this experiment. Now the last point um, in this question that is problem solving based is the graph. So the graph then is something that people tend to actually get wrong quite frequently. Now it's asking you first of all to construct a line graph, so please make sure that when you're doing this experiment and you're doing the experiment of design questions that you actually draw the correct graph for this. Now to draw a graph you need to put the different parts in the correct areas of the graph. So on this graph here, you've got a table of information that you have to plot. The one on the left goes along the x-axis, okay? So you go along this x-axis, okay? So that concentration of substrate then goes along that x-axis. Now do not shorten concentration to C-O-N-C. And do not shorten substrate to sub for whatever reason you would do that. Okay? You must then include the units, which is M. M for molar. Now the next label is absorbance units. Okay? So absorbance and then your units are just units. Up the side. Now so far you've still not even gained one mark. 
you have to do units um, and labels and then you have to do your scales as well. Now you can have a common zero if it's appropriate but it has to be so far into this corner that it's just safer to have two separate zeros. Okay, so in this scale for doing concentration of substrate, we're starting at 0 0.05 and going up to 0 0.8. So you could go up in 0 0.1s for this. So this is 0, then 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, etc, etc. Okay, now you do not have to continue on this scale because you're still, um, you've reached the highest point that you'll need, which is 0 0.8. Okay, then you have your scale for absorbance. So you're going up to a highest point of 0 0.9 and your lowest point is 0 0.2. So realistically, you can start at 0 and then go up in the same values as before. So you can go up in 0.1s. So 0 here, and again, notice two separate zeros. Then up in your divisions up to your highest value, which is 0 0.9. Okay, you don't need to go any further and do it to 1.0, you can just stick to your highest value. This, getting this correct for your scales and labels and your units, is one mark. Okay, if you reverse these, you would lose a mark. Or if you did not use half your scale, then you would lose a mark. So what that means is essentially, if you were only using the top part of this to plot your points, you're missing the rest of this bit of graph paper by not using the whole of your scale. Now the next part is just plotting the points. So for 0 0.05, which will be halfway in between here, your point is 0 0.2. And note my point is not massive, okay? You don't want to make them too big because that will take up too much space in your graph. And if it covers more than that, um, more than it should, you'll lose the mark for your points. So 0 0.2 is 0 0.48. 0 0.4 is 0 0.64. 0 0.6 is 0 0.78. And then 0 0.8 is 0 0.9. Now, when you're doing a graph, you must join the points from the middle, the centre of your point, to the next point. So it's not a line of best fit like you would do in some other sciences. It's from the centre of your point directly to the centre of your next point. Okay, so basically a dot to dot. Now, if you miss your points, or you go too far and extend your line past this bit, you would lose a mark. If you join this to zero, you would lose a mark, because there is no point in this table where it says zero for concentration and zero for absorbance. So do not join your line to zero unless you are sure that you have a value for that. Okay, so that covers question three from the 2017 paper for experimental design.